Hey guys, and welcome to this video on Stardew Valley. If you've clicked on this video, then hopefully you know of the Stardew Valley secret, which is currently being investigated by the community. This is a video about compiling all the information we have so far as of the date of recording, and hopefully trying to point us in a direction. So this information has come from various people who play the game across the Reddit community and the Steam Discussions community specifically, and the first bit of information we have is a map. Unfortunately, I don't know who originally posted this map, as there's no credit on the picture itself, and the picture's just gone around circulation so much now it's kind of been lost in translation. But the map is of a statue that Leah gives you once you befriend her. The statue is like a little spiral loop-de-loop, -loop, but the person who came up with this was feeling imaginative and decided that maybe this, this, the shape of this has something to do with something. So they put it on top of a map of the game, and it actually marks the location of all the various boxes you can find. If you don't know what the boxes are, there are some boxes scattered around placed by houses and at locations throughout the game. And if you put a certain item in these boxes, then you will get a statue out of them. We have the first box outside Jody's house, we have the second box outside the saloon, we have the third box uh, just by George's house, and then it kind of does a loop, it comes back down and it comes to the mayor's house where there's another box, and then it goes up to the box in the little uh, fenced off garden area behind the blacksmith. So with all of these boxes, for example with a blacksmith, if you put a super cucumber in, you will get a statue. Just a random statue you can use as furniture. And there are believed to be five of these statues, uh, with five specific items that goes in specific boxes. If you put duck mayonnaise in one of the boxes, you'll get another statue which is different. And it's believed that there are five statues, we're still trying to work out two of the five items, so we've worked out three of them as a community. So the loop in this statue, because granted it's a like it is spot on, that is an exact recreation of the statue and it does match through through those locations. So it could be coincidence or it could be it could be intentional. I would like to believe it's intentional. I'll give it benefit of the doubt. But it does suggest there is some stuff to be found by the community centre. Now I think that makes sense because in my area generally there's nothing there, like that little fenced off part to the left and the playground and the fountain. As far as I know, they have no real uses, so wouldn't it make sense if something could be done there, or there was something to do there? Otherwise, I'm sure Concerned Ape would have filled those areas with content. But regardless, this is the first bit of information we have, this statue and the link it has with the boxes where you can obtain other statues. The next bit of information we have is a screenshot from the Fisherman Willy, who tells us the legend of the Winter Star. He says, and I quote, in the night sky of winter, there is a bright star only visible from this alley. No one knows why this is, but in times of old, in times of old, people would come from far and wide to see it. They believe that anyone who laid eyes on the winter star would be blessed with good fortune. Some even claim that the mysterious fruit known as the star drop is connected with the winter star in some way. Star drops, if you don't know, this is a, a mild spoiler. They're things you can obtain at various points throughout the game for doing various things, and they will increase your total amount of energy. So, they're arguably some of the most valuable, powerful items in the game. But, that part is accounted for. The Winter Star itself, and the reason for these star drops, how they exist, isn't. And there's this legend of Winter Star, which has a story which is told to us, but there's no other information we have about Winter Star so far. None of, there's been no sightings of it, none of the other characters have really talked about it, and there's nothing we can really do with it. I personally do think it's suspicious that there's, there's this legend of it, but then nothing more about it. Is it just meant to serve as context for the star drops, or is there something more to it? I, I personally believe the latter. The third bit of information we have is this mysterious entity known as the Yoba, which are mentioned at various points throughout the game. For example, in the library, you can find a book called The Book of Yoba, and this book reads, Before time there was only endless golden light. The light called out to itself, Yoba. Yoba wanted more. Yoba swirled the golden light into a vortex. Yoba swirled and swirled until a hole formed in the eye of the vortex. From this hole sprung a seed. Yoba smoothed the golden light. Yoba smoothed and smoothed and the light became soil. Into this soil, Yoba planted the seed. The seed sprouted and behold, a vine sprung skyward, twisting and probing, casting a writhing shadow onto the golden void. After 11 days, the vine bore fruit. Yoba, with knowing wisdom, peeled the tough skin off the fruit and saw that the world was inside. And so that is how the world came to be. 
So again, this may be a simple bit of information that serves as a backstory to the world and how it was created, and Yoba are equivalently the gods of Stardew Valley. However, this could be information towards the secret, which is why I'm mentioning it in this video. It does say oddly specifically about the vine bearing fruit after 11 days, and people have tried things such as growing the fruit that take 11 days to grow, and ones that grow on vines, and then taking them to the Yoba Shrine, but unfortunately that hasn't yielded to any successful outcome. I am very adamant this piece of information is relevant though, because again it is oddly specific, it's also found in a library book in the game, so it, it's very legitimate, and most of these library books have a purpose, like the, the, the ones that mention about the legendary fish. They're used to find out where those fish can be caught and give us some information about them. So this book, I, I think this is one of the keys which we need to analyse to find out. The fourth little theory we have going on is from someone called Iris Teeth. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. But I think it's a fairly solid lead because they mentioned the, the relevance of the Yoga symbol but they also pointed out how that symbol is seen during the Halloween festival. You can see it near the end of the maze and at the end of the maze you get a golden pumpkin which is something you can place in your house as like a little decoration. Now again, this golden pumpkin could just be a decoration, nothing more, something to work towards on the Halloween event and something to have by the end of it. But Insteef, I, I'm going to change the pronunciation of your name every time, has a different theory as to what golden pumpkin means. They think that due to the Yoba symbol being at this event, the golden pumpkin has relevance and they linked it in with Legend of Yoba, which I mentioned earlier, and there's the quote of there being endless golden light, the pumpkin obviously being golden. So maybe we've been led down the wrong path with this fine type fruit we're looking for, and the golden pumpkin is instead what we are looking for. It does fit in, it does have that tough skin that needs to be peeled away, very much like a pumpkin, and it's got the colour, it's got the golden colour. It's one of the only golden items in the game, as far as I know. It should also be noted that during this event, you can see the wizard and Linus sitting on top of the cliff behind the maze. And a lot of people have been trying to communicate with them, because you get a speech bubble when you hover over them, but there is no way to get to where they are, there's no way to talk to them. So this, this could just be something where you can't talk to them and they're just there like as decorations. But people are generally convinced they have dialogue and that you can access them somehow, we just don't know how yet. A couple of members of the community have claimed that they have managed to find a way to get to them, but this hasn't been backed up by any kind of evidence or screenshots, so that could just be people looking for attention for all I know. As a final thing to mention, this community member also mentioned about splashes you hear around town, which is something everyone seems to have heard. You get a lot of strange noises walking around Stardew Valley, and a lot of time of you kind of work out, okay, that's a frog, or okay, that's something leaping into the water. But otherwise, they happen in locations that they shouldn't be happening or there's loud, strange noises and they still haven't been identified. So that is, again, a bit of information that could be relevant, it could be not. It could just be something completely unrelated. Then the final bit of information for this video is from the same member of the community, and it is the mentions of all these various other places in the game. Iris Steff provided a album with screenshots of a couple of references, and we have this recurring theme of the Katoro Empire, if that's how I pronounce it, and it seems as though the Gatoro Empire are the rivals, villains, enemy, whatever you want to call it, of Stardew Valley, and they, they never seem to be written about in a positive light, it always seems there's mentions of a war with them, and this might be some background, some lore for the game, but it could also be something that we should investigate, something that could give us some more information about this secret. Then there is also mention of a place called Zuzu City, which isn't an accessible area in the game, it's not mentioned at many other points throughout the game at all, but it is mentioned at one point on an advert on the television. So Zuzu City and the Gatoro Empire are two undiscovered locations, could have some relevance with the easter egg, could not, it's just a bit of information that could help, so I mentioned it in this video. Speaking of which, as a last little bonus, there is still the staircase by the train track. This staircase is available on the store page of Stardew Valley, it's available in the final image, you can see this picture, and you can see a staircase leading to a location, which is believed to be the mountain lake, which apparently was unused. 
but this staircase is still there in the final image of the game. In the game itself, it isn't there. It's just it's just a brick wall, and there's no way to get there. I think that's a pretty loose theory, as it could just be a development change. It's no longer necessary, but who knows? There might be a way to unlock this staircase and get to another area that we that nobody's been to yet. Then, just because I forgot one final bit of information, which I think is important, is mention of the Dwarf King. There are dwarves in this game. There are mentioned dwarves, but the Dwarf King is a unused asset. There have been mentions of Dwarf King in things such as the code, but nobody has found a Dwarf King, and that is something a lot of community members are hunting for right now. They are trying to get to the bottom of Skull Cave, they're trying to explore as many locations as possible, and try and find this Dwarf King NPC person, but they've had no luck so far, and that's one of the newer developments that hasn't really had any leads. So yeah, I wanted to make this one video just to get all the information together so that anyone watching it can be up to date as of the time of this video being posted, and if you have any leads you can investigate them, or you can suggest for other people to investigate them. Both communities I mentioned in this video are still very active and there's a lot of people hunting for the secret, so if you want to join in the hunt, feel free to, it'd be great if we can have some extra manpower on board. If there's anything I missed, then apologies, and thanks a lot to everyone who contributed information for this video, and if there's anything you can contribute as viewers, then feel free to do so in the comments below.